Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday. We are getting our reset day in EU as well. And today I'm going to go for a short, or at the very least, that's my plan. We will see in the end if I actually manage to make it short. Short video about some useful Recoras to bring with you for the most part in Mythic Plus. Because most of the time I get to hear about, hey Eisen, what's that Recora? Hey Eisen, how do you make it look like that? Hey Eisen, what are you using for that thing over there? Hey Eisen, how did you manage to make that frame look like that? Well, now you're getting a whole bunch of answers in this video where I will be posting the links and also the description of many of the most requested Recoras I typically use. Let's start quickly with the simplest one, which is the Combat Timer Wikora. This might not seem very important, but many times if you want to keep track of the time in a fight, this is also quite more useful in a raid fight, because fights are of course longer than a Mythic Plus encounter, but the Combat Timer will simply do what it says. It's gonna show you how long have you been in combat for. A feature, interestingly, which is still not in the default UI of, of Blizzard. Then we move into an ensemble Wikora because this is the general big pack of Wikoras for Mythic Plus, which is the Dragonflight Season 1 Dungeons Wikora made by Relo. Now, there are quite a few if you're gonna be checking by yourself on something like uh, wago.io about, you know, this, this compilation of Wikoras for all the dungeons. I chose this one because I think it's the most comprehensive and the one I like the most between the split of bars and icons and a few other things. You can move them around however you want. If you like, for example, to have your bars in certain positions and your icons in different positions, then you can move them around different dungeon by different dungeon. You can even remove certain icons, certain mechanics you don't care about. So that is a pretty good comprehensive list for your dungeon weak auras based on the mechanics of the dungeons. Talking about dungeon mechanics, you can also pick up things like the Court of Star Helpers. One is this one over here, the Court of Star Helper. This one will just show a message using DBM or, or Bigwig's announcer in the middle of the screen, telling you essentially what you are close by and which specs or classes or professions can use the item. That is the first one. The other one is the Court of Star item buffs. This one will instead show up in your map. So you can open up your map inside of Court of Stars to see where all of the buffs are and which races, classes, specs and whatnot can pick up those buffs or activate those items. Now, the Dragonflight Season 1 already has its own Thundering Helper, which is right over here. It's just going to be a timer. And then when Thundering comes, you're going to get the Thundering with the names of the players you can match with. But you can also take an additional one, like, for example, the Affix Thundering, which will give you not just the timer when it's about to come, but also your safe or pairing uh, marker, blue, if you have to pair with a blue mark or red, if you have to pair with a red mark and the essentially the clock timing out to show you how much time you have. It's also on top of your character, basically. So it's much more uh, easy to notice if you are about to get uh, fucked by the thundering timing out. It's also worth reminding everyone of another one of the more requested Wikoras, which is the ultimate mouse cursor. Now, you can't see it because right now it's not set up to load um, out of combat, but when it is, it looks like this. Basically, it shows, it highlights basically your your mouse button. Now, this is my own modified version. I'm gonna link both my own and the default version of the Ultimate Mouse Cursor, which is a little bit different, but the point is still the same. The point is to highlight your mouse cursor a little bit better while you are in combat, given how, how many things are on the screen nowadays. Sometimes finding your mouse can get a little bit tricky, and this one can help you with that. Another very useful thing that has popped up, especially this expansion, perhaps given by the amount of things you have to try to keep track of, which is the spell cooldowns on nameplate. This does exactly what it uh, says. It's going to put, assume this is the nameplate of the enemy, this is going to put the abilities on cooldown of the enemy right here to make you see essentially when those abilities are going to come off cooldown, meaning when are they more likely to start using said abilities. You can also change where do you want them, don't worry. If you want to change the 
all of the normal abilities you can simply go here where, where do you want them do you want them here 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 it's up to you you just have to choose the position settings for the spells and then the highlighted spells the more important ones you can also change that as well so depending on where you want them to show up on the plate on the target frame of your your plates this is going to help you keep track of more dangerous abilities which is also quite important in trash mobs because you know during boss encounters you can have things like bigwigs things like dbm basically tell you when abilities are coming off cooldown but doing trash during trash you can't quite see it doing trash it's much more difficult to keep track of those dangerous trash mechanics and this spell cds on the nameplates can help you during trash in mythic plus uh, dungeons that's very very uh, helpful talking about helpful there are a few things based on affixes one is the much much older quaking uh, cd interrupt bar this is the one that shows you when you're starting a cast if that cast is going to be interrupted by the quaking basically that, that that's just it it's just a helper to help to help you time your abilities and your casts with quaking another more important one <laughs> given how, how much how much more often we have gotten explosives this uh, this season is the explosive orb hide nameplate it does exactly what it says you go into this week aura and custom options and you get to choose the modifier what this does is when you click this modifier any one of these all of the nameplates in the fight all of the nameplates in combat will disappear and only the explosive nameplate will stay up so if you're pulling let's just say 10 enemies and suddenly three explosives spawn except they are in the middle they are in between all those 10 enemies plates it's a mess trying to even hit them if you click if you select for example left shift now all you have to do is click left shift and now all of them will disappear except for the explosive which will make it much easier to take them down we also have another interesting one although not for everyone but it's still worth using especially if you are the leader in a mythic plus key which is the mythic plus auto marker this does more or less what it says it is going to automatically mark the more dangerous enemies in a mythic plus trash back there are of course plenty of options plenty of things you can set up yourself even now to to choose to manually mouse over mark them based on a, on a particular uh, modifier key or to simply choose which of the setups you want now if you want to just not touch anything just keep it how it is and it's going to work by itself if you want to tinker a little bit more you can for example even go dungeon by dungeon mob by mob and select them by yourself and choose for example which of them should be marked which of them shouldn't be marked based on how dangerous they are for example for example in this case the guardian construct is quite the dangerous mob so it will be marked something like a useless mana worm it's not really that dangerous so no need to mark it if you go to something like halls of valor of course we all know that the valorjar thunder caller is very dangerous so of course it's going to be marked etc etc the simplest setup i can give you is that if you want for example to also mark your tank and your healer then all you have to do is do things like disable cross and square so that you can always put cross on the tank for example and square on the healer and this add-on will never take away those marks from your tank and your healer for example if you have set marker group one to the abilities which is what it is by default this is of course much more helpful later on in the keys when you can start talking with your group for example saying things like hey rogue you take care of the interrupts on star demon hunter you take care of the interrupts on on circle and i the tank will take care of the interrupts on on diamond for example that's usually what the auto marker is used for the last of the all-purpose weak auras is going to be the blood dk runic power tracker for healers so this does exactly what it says it is going to automatically attach this weak aura to the blood death knight in your party what it's going to do is simply it's going to show you how much runic power the tank is going to have and then also give it a different color 
if the DK has less than 35 runic power, which is basically not even able to use a single death strike, the color is going to be red because it means the death knight is in danger. If the DK has between 35 to 70 runic power, the color is going to be white. If it has above 70 runic power, the color is going to be green. And then the color is going to turn into purple if the DK is running out of bone shield charges. So basically this is just a helper for healers to notice when the DK tank is in danger because you know death knights work on kind of a different scale than other tanks in when they are in danger and this is going to help the healers track essentially how safe a blood death knight is during a pull in mythic plus so these are my most used and also most useful uh, mythic plus weak auras that I use and then just because just because in case you're going to try to reroll to one of the flavor of the month specs I'm also going to add my own suite my own preservation evoker uh, setup weak auras for everything basically that has to do with preservation evoker from the cast bar to all of the different abilities to the reminder to buff people to the the amount of uh, essences you have the health bars the mana bar etc etc that's also what I use for my spec right now. So I'm hoping that you can at the very least grab a few of these Wikoras you weren't using before and you might find useful when you jump into your next Mythic Plus key. The links are going to be of course down in the description for you to grab all of these each individual Wikoras if you want to. So with this uh, informational and helpful video done with, we can now leave each other on this Wednesday. Thanks of course everyone who has watched this video, including of course first and foremost my Patreon supporters for the contribution and the help to the growth of this channel. Supporting in other ways includes following me over on Twitter at this link together with following me on my stream over at Twitch. With all of these helpful uh, links out of the way, we can now leave each other. Thank you guys again for watching. See you guys soon. And in the meantime, I could have also given out some of the raid week auras, but you know, perhaps it's better if you just take what your raid leader gives you instead of getting something from someone else that messes up your entire, your entire raid.